Hey everyone, welcome back along to my channel and for joining me on another pinhole adventure. Now today, I'm a little bit lost as to where to actually go. Normally I kind of head to one location and explore it and yeah, but today I'm just, uh, I've, got no, I've still not really got a clue. Um, I kind of had an idea in mind of what I wanted to do, but it very much involves uh, getting it right with the tides and that's not matching up with my free time at the moment. So I'm just gonna uh, plod around somewhere. But I am out today with the new Mia 6x12. It's actually a multi-format, so you can do 6x6, 6x9 and 6x12. Um, I think this was just one of uh, the prototypes just to make sure everything was working fine. I believe the final design has changed a little bit. I think the filter holder's changed and the shutter has changed a little bit. It's all 3D printed. So big thanks to Andre for sending me this to play with, really. Um, as normal, it's all nice. I can't really do this one hand. Magnetic filter holder. This doesn't actually... This holds the Coke and A. I didn't have any Coke and A, so I've got some Coke and P, but I can still strap them over the front, so that's what I'll be doing. You get them in these funky 3D, pin, um, pin, 3D printed colours now, multi, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to liking this. Looking forward to using this. I'm all over the place with my words today. Um, 35 mil focal, 175 f-stop, 175. Now, 6x12, I think it's definitely my favourite medium format format. Um, I do like the 6x6. I've never been really uh, overly fussed by 6x9. I don't know why, but certainly do like 6x12. So I'm looking forward to using this. I have first just come to this church. It's got the light on it nicely. And I think down the road, that bridge I was at the other week, it's one of them days where it's sunny but the wind is absolutely freezing. So, I've got some Ilford F <clears throat> FB4 Plus to load in, and we will get out and get some lovely photographs, hopefully. So, welcome along, let's do this. So this is what I'm going for. I'm hopefully getting a view up just past some trees and have this path following up. It'll probably get just over about here somewhere. So I put a red foot on using this strap. Oh, can't see it, sun. I'll show you that better in a bit. Almost fell over. So that's gonna get me about a seven and a half second exposure. Some of you might recognise this bridge from a couple of videos back, I think it was here, with my Zero Image 4x5 and my Yashuka D. Um, I was hoping for a photo from around here, but straight into the sun today. But at least today, you can see where it leads to. 
Uh, last time I was here, that was all just covered in cloud. For some reason, my microphone decided to play up a couple of times throughout this video. This shot being one of them. This is purely just me setting up my camera for the shot. And as you can see, it is windy and it was freezing. I wanted to keep the camera low so it wasn't being affected by the wind and as you can see here I'm just moving the camera backwards and forwards just so it's sitting in the shadow of that post. What I wanted was to not have the sun flare going across the shot. It's not a problem for some but it's not a shot I particularly felt would work well with it. And in this bit, uh, I'm just explaining about the positioning of the camera and the post to be in the shade. So I've not got that sun flare going across the pinhole and then going into the composition. But somehow I fixed the mic without even realizing it was broken. Kind of here, have that railing follow around. Got some nice light on here, just tucking up and over the bridge and some nice sky. <laughs> I've taken the red filter off because I don't want it to darken up this too much. It would be nice in the sky, definitely. Um, it darken that up, but I think it's just going to hide them shadows a bit too much. So I've got about a two second exposure on this, so it's got to be quick. I might do this where I open it, keep my finger over the hole, and then move and do that just to avoid too much movement. And that should do. Now the other nice thing about this location is that it is a cafe. So I'm going to get my morning coffee and head on somewhere else. Maybe. So I've decided to quickly set up another one here before I get my coffee. Just following the curvature of that bridge. So because I'm in the shade now, I'm kind of getting about three, four second exposure. Okay, so I have now headed down into a town called New Haven. New Haven is it's a port, port town, quite industrial. Not the sort of place you'd come for a nice English seaside town, but it's okay, it's okay here. There's some good points and there's lots of bad. Um, but certainly for photography, it's quite an interesting place. Um, unfortunately, lots of the, the good stuff's all blocked off to public. Uh, lots of old boats, lots of scrap metal places where the ships come in and take it away. Um, so I'm going to have a little wander along. I was trying to get in the car park at the end, but my van's too high. There is an old fort just up the hill. I've been to, uh, I can't get in the fort because you've got to pay. Um, but there is some other old fort war stuff over up at the bottom. So I'm going to maybe see if I can get something with them. But I'm going to have a little one along, see what I can find. And um, I think I've got three shots left. So should be good. A 
another where the mic was playing up and I've been left with this horrible static view. So for this I quite like that fence leading you down to this Victorian style beach hut. I left their red filter on for this for a 7 second exposure hoping just to drag them clouds across the sky a little bit and uh, I was hoping to regain some detail in the windsock but it was just flapping around so much all over the place that it's basically just blurred itself out but the general composition for this I actually really quite liked. derelict junk around this bit. Um, it's pretty grim. I think this, I don't know if this is still in use in the summer, like a fish shop, but I think might make a nice photo. The sun's coming in nice on its side, so I might try one of that straight on. Well, there's an old boat down there. I've got enough of old boats at the moment. Right, so this will be all my shots straight on. Got a nice bit of light on the cliffs just to the side. A little bit of light coming on the side of the deck in there. It's about a seven second exposure. This is one of them ones I walked past earlier and I've come back past and I thought that could work, it could not. I've kind of got the camera pointed down so I get some of this texture down here and these nice, I don't know what they are to be honest, you'll stop people climbing over. And then it's a nice consistent all these beams coming out. It's got about four second exposure on it. I'm going to give it a go, it might work, it might not. Let me know in the comments what you think. We've got the uh, lifeboat coming past, I might be able to time it with that. Mind you, I think it might be hidden by that beam. Give it a try. Okay, so that is it, that is my six shots done. I kind of wish I had bought more film actually, but I don't know why I didn't. Certainly New Haven is an interesting place. There is lots, lots going on here. <clears throat> and as you head further up the river, there's a load of houseboats, a few sunken boats. Uh, there's the old fort up there. Um, general places where there's a fishing, um, a fishing dockyard. Uh, you just find, I quite like them because you find lots of stuff everywhere. That's why I quite often head over to Hastings the last week. I was on a little section of Eastbourne Beach, which is a little beach uh, fishing area. And there's always just stuff everywhere, which is fantastic to photograph. 
but that was it that was a really nice camera actually uh hopefully there's no light leaks i'm pretty confident there isn't because i know andre uh shared quite a few photos on his mere pinholes instagram page so make sure you go check that out um and yeah thanks for watching guys really really appreciate it and um, for what i said in my last video i have brought myself the biggest film changing bag i can find which is about a meter square i think which is uh since drilling all my holes in my ceiling uh, and my loft space not being very light tight anymore that is going to solve that issue okay it's big enough to fix a bo fit a box in so i can actually have like an old little area for my large format film to load it and put on the tank and everything um i've not got my new camera yet which i mentioned uh fortunately the dog had a vet trip <coughs> which is always fun uh but that will be kind um but yeah thanks for watching guys really appreciate it let me know what your favorite photo was uh, i always appreciate the comments and feel free to ask me any questions uh, always happy to chat to people and yeah subscribe and i'll see you next time i'm out thanks for watching guys much appreciate it see you soon